Very happy to be talking to you today. I'm here with Sharad Kumar at Click Connect 2025 in Orlando. First question for you. If you were going to live in a house that was built on top of quicksand, would you live there? Uh, not really. Okay. What if it was built on top of jello? Would you live there? No. Okay. Now, what if I told you the house had a strong, solid concrete foundation? Would you live there now? Yes, of course. Yeah. Exactly my point. So I assume you know where we're going. Mm -hmm. Companies need a strong data foundation. They all want AI. Tell us why is it important to have that strong data foundation? Yeah. So Kate, if you look in the morning, we talked about that what 89 to 90% of the customers are doing something with AI, but only 25% are really succeeding. So what is the reason why they're not succeeding? One of the biggest reason when you dig in is really bad data. So they have garbage in, garbage out. So the data is poor. They, they don't have the foundation right. And some of the other reason is they may have bad models, but also another big reason is that they're treating these AI projects like science projects, long drawn projects, but not really tied to business outcomes. So not tying it to specific goals and specific KPIs. And that's what these projects fail. So not having the right data, incomplete data, inaccurate data, Data may be, have bias in it. It's because one of the biggest concerns people have is around security of data. So if mm -hmm. you don't address this as part of your foundation, yeah. you'll never be able to roll out AI beyond your lab. Right, that's, that's very true. So, but executives want AI today, right? They don't want to wait. Should we tell them to sit down, be patient, or does Click have a, a solution that can help them? Yeah, so that's actually a very interesting topic. So there's a big gap between the C-suite and the ground reality. Mm. So the C-suite want, they have a lot more urgency around AI. They want quick results. They want to see progress. They don't want to fall behind their competitors because everybody's talking about AI. So they're like, well, we better get on. But the ground reality with the data and the AI leaders is different. Yep. They're looking at it, data is messy, the data is siloed, it's not clean, it's not secure. So that's where there's, a, I would say, a tension between the C-suites and on the ground. Yeah. And that's causing a challenge. Right. Right? And do you think the fact that ag agentic AI is so in demand right now, is that increasing that tension? Yeah. So, so a couple of things there. If we look at agentic AI, what is agentic AI? Simplest way to look at agentic AI is it's removing human from the loop. Right. So now, without the human in the loop, agentic or agents are acting directly on data. Mm -hmm. So now, without human in the loop, if you have bad data, your agents are going to act on bad data. Yeah. They're going to get bad results, bad outcome, unintended, unintended consequences. You may have anomalies in data that will slip by because earlier you had a human at least to do checks. Right. But with agentic, when you're talking about fully autonomous and automated, the problem amplifies. And these agents also, once they process the data, they make decisions, they learn from it. So if you have start with bad data, the problem starts to keep getting uh, right. amplified. So yes. in the agentic world, having a strong data foundation yeah. is actually even more important than in the generative AI world, where at least you have a human being right. with the checks and balance and serving as a guardrail. And do you think that we'll still have a human in the loop even with the agentic systems? Well, I think it'll get to a point and the whole goal of agentic is to remove human in the loop. But I think we have to be selective about what areas you want humans and what areas you don't. So most companies will start off with fully agentic where I would say the risk is lower, where the agents cannot, let's call, say, cause harm. Yeah. Right. So that's where it'll start till you start feeling comfortable. Right. Right. Until you feel comfortable and have trust in your data. So mm -hmm. once you have trust in your data, then you can say, okay, let me, I can turn these agents loose. Right. right? Exactly. Because I have trusted data. I know I've secured my data. I know it's complete. I know it's good quality. Now I can let these agents do their work. Right. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So my final question to you is around data products, right? Yeah. How do they actually help bridge the gap between data producers and data consumers? And if you can share an example, that would be great. Yeah. So if you look at typically what happens is the data producers tend to be IT people. Yeah. And all they're tasked with are how do I get the data out of different types of systems? How do I move it? 
how do I put it into a data lake or a data warehouse? How do I protect it? How do I make sure it performs? And they really don't understand the business use cases or the needs of the business. So on the other side, the consumers, if they have AI use cases, they're trying to understand, okay, what data is there for me to build my agent on or for my analytics on? What does it mean to me? Can I trust it? Is it good quality? Yeah. Is it in a form I can consume? And that's what creates a gap between the two. Right. And data products are a great way to bridge that gap because data products are inherently packaged, trusted data, which has semantics in it, mm -hmm. good quality, they're easier to consume, and they have an owner. Right. Right. So data products are a great way to bridge that gap and drive your AI off it. What's your uh, takeaway from the keynote today? Well, I think keynote was good. You can see where we are going, where the industry is going. So big reveals around the agentic architectures. The industry is moving there very fast. Big reveals around lake house concept. That was a big one. We have been working on it. So I think those two, for me, were the most exciting parts of the keynote, mm -hmm. right? And the Mike's call to action is get and start doing something. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, okay, exactly. amazing. Well, first I want to say thank you so much for your time here today. Yeah. And can you please tell my audience where can they go to learn more about all of this? Well, I think the best place to go would be, I think, click.com. I think follow us on LinkedIn, right? So that's where we make a lot of announcements, a lot of our podcasts, a lot of our webcasts are all announced on LinkedIn. Yes. So between LinkedIn and click.com is the best place to go. Amazing. All right, well, thank you. Cheers. Thank you, Kate.